This film follows a young, sensible journalist that manages to land a role at a prestigious fashion company as an assistant to the brutal and terrifying boss Miranda Priestley. She quickly learns that she's going to have to adapt fast if she's to survive in this new cutthroat world and will have to ditch many of her morals and ethics to make something of herself, risking stepping on toes and losing close friends. The movie attracted some top-tier talent, landing the likes of Anne Hathaway, Meryl Streep, Stanley Tukey and Emily Blunt. I have to say though, I didn't really like this film. I guess this stemmed from two main reasons. The first isn't the film's fault, it's just that I have no interest in the fashion world. I don't really know anything nor care about clothes, shoes, scarves, perfumes, hats and such and as a result I wasn't really invested with the world Hathaway's character found herself in. Of course, the argument to this is, well, it's not your sort of film. And that's exactly what I'm saying. If she worked in, say, a football club or a blockbuster store or something, then all the jargon references wouldn't be lost on me. And I'd most likely be a lot more interested in seeing what was going on and how those industries work. The second main issue is that 15 minutes or so in, I could guess the events in the movie pretty much beat for beat. It was painfully predictable because the story template has been done to death. A naive, mildly successful person boards a larger enterprise, finds out that the corporate world is not so nice and ends up going back to what they love. Rip out the fashion from the film and replace it with food and you've got John Favreau's chef. Axe the handbags and dresses and replace it with football management and you have The Damned United. These stories need charismatic actors and devilishly sharp scripts in order to succeed and whilst I guess Hathaway is supposed to be simple and modest, as a character she's pretty bland and boring, despite being surrounded by far more entertaining actors and characters. I didn't feel the movie offered much, there were no real surprises in the story and it was just really quite light on any drama, conflict or even humour. There was a bit of stuff towards the end where the protagonist realises Miranda herself might be sacked from her job. Ooh, uh, and she desperately tries to save her. But you think to yourself, this is the woman who destroyed so many women's careers. Why should I care about her getting the chop? Good riddance. And aside from the script being pretty lame anyway, a lot of it doesn't make much sense and you get the feel that certain characters come out with something or certain events take place simply in order to plod the plot along. There's many eye-raising moments in the movie, like Hathaway managing to obtain unpublished manuscripts of the latest Harry Potter book, and especially the final act that Miranda does in the film. I mean, spoilers if you regard this as a spoiler, but Hathaway's character literally ditches her when she's her right-hand woman to go off and do her own thing. And we're expected to believe Miranda gave her a good reference and has a highly favourable view of her now. No way, I'm not buying that. Also, I didn't really think Miranda was that bad. I mean, I've seen worse bosses. She's willing to step on toes, removes employees with a flick of a hand, she's tough, snarky. But where is the evilness that makes us love to hate her? Where are the actions that justifies the tears we see streaming down Hathaway's face? Emily Blunt's character is a bit bitchy at first but ends up being quite likeable and Tuki plays a kind of gay best friend who propels the protagonist forward in the industry. If the movie wanted to portray the fashion industry as an unforgivable, harsh world it really did fail because its approach was nowhere near strong enough. I thought the movie was pretty shallow, hollow and amounted to a whole lot of nothingness. I give it a 4 out of 10.